Hey, what is up guys, it's me Harley, and welcome to me doing a Frost Dragon guide for you. Now, I have done one of these about a year ago, and I wanted to redo it because, uh, you know, I had a Mac back then, and it, was, it wasn't it was very good quality, so I want to redo it for you guys. Now, um, the other reason for doing this is that a friend recently joined, um, like, rejoined playing RuneScape, and I told him basically to go to Frost Dragons. So, you know, for those people who maybe want to go to Frost Dragons and haven't been, this guide's kind of for you. Now, uh, a lot of people have been using these notepapers at Frost Dragons, so I'd imagine they're a bit more... Um, you know, a lot more people are going there just for that kind of fact, and double XP weekends coming around, so people want, maybe want to get bones that way, and all sorts. So I thought, yes, yeah, do the guide. Um, I'm going to put a table of contents like I normally do, guys, so you can kind of skip to everything you need, and you don't have to just sit around waiting for the part you want. And uh, we're going to jump straight into it, and we're going to go in and talk about the armor layouts and weapons and everything like that. You pretty much want to, you really want to be taken. Uh, so I'll catch you guys in a second. Okay, guys. So here's kind of the basic. Uh, setup you might want to be taking. Now, I like Bandos and a, a Zamorak and Spirit purely because it doesn't degrade, it's very good, and it's very, well, relatively cheap. If you don't have this type of money, then obviously you can swap out the um, Zamorak and Spirit with a Blistered Wood Pole Arm. Now, this will do the job because it obviously has a stab capability, it's very cheap. Um, however, you do need a quest of the uh, Branches of Dark Mire, which you need a load of quests to follow up to be, even be able to do that quest, but say you're more of a quester, uh, but you're lacking on a bit of cash, that's your next best thing if you've got Super Antis. And if you do not have super anti fires, then obviously you're going to be wanting to take a dragon fire shield, and uh, a normal uh, fire shield will do, a normal dragon shield, sorry, will do. And you can swap this out with, um, you know, a chaotic rapier or a drago rapier. Anything that's so, like an offhand or main hand stab will do the job because the dragons are weak to stab, and you kind of want to be using uh, that kind of weaponry on them. Again, you can use um, a chaotic uh, maul and stuff like that. I wouldn't recommend it um, because you're not going to be able to kill them before their orbs come up, I don't think, it's not going to do as much damage, but you can use them now, you know, I'm not going to say no you can't, because um, they will kill them at the end of the day. But for the faster kills, you definitely want to be using stab weapons to uh, kill them a lot quicker, and that's obviously going to help you out with any hour on speed and money. Uh, if you don't have the money for Bandos, then Void is your next best thing, because it does help with your hits, and it's, uh, you know, I'd highly recommend getting Void, because it, you know, apparently there is a buff uh, that's going to be on, on it, and uh, making it really good. However, if you do take Void, you've got to note that you will be taking a lot more damage because it doesn't have very good defenses. It's kind of like hybrid armor, so it's not your best armor, but it's um, but it's you know it is practically free. Just takes a bit of your time, and um, it's worth using down here. And I see quite a few people using it down here. Now, if you don't have very high combat stats, and you're more of a range or a magic person, I highly recommend not using <laughs> magic down here because of its armor is pretty weak against both. I mean, you can. Um, take magic hits, but obviously you will not be able to take range hits very well. Um, but uh, I'd highly recommend using, obviously, um, range as your next best option because it's good down there. Uh, it's not as good as melee, but it will do the job. Now you don't have to obviously have death lotus because you, you can have armor deal. Again, you can have void, but range void, range void will work uh, really good down there. And you can swap it out for a royal crossbow. I wouldn't say anything lower than a royal crossbow because you're just not going to be doing the damage to kill him before the orbs come up, and your trip's just not going to be that um, as good as you want it to be within the hour. So I highly recommend having at least a Royal Crossbow or maybe the Armadillo Crossbow with all the Kirill's pistols will probably do the job. Um, but that's what I would take and again you can obviously just swap it out for um, do it like half and half. I'll just get the right half and half going up here. Obviously you can do it half and half if you want to and uh, you know again the kills are going to be a bit slower and the idea or the technique I guess to Frost Dragons is kind of having yourself like Power up, like power right up. Do as much damage as you can before they can do the the blue attack, and it'll just help you. Your trip will go nice and smooth. You won't have to worry about anything, and it just helps out with the trip like mega loads. But this isn't like a direct guide on what you you should wear. It's just like a a mix and match. Like you can wear this and have bits and bobs of everything else. Again, you know, with ring, you can have like a, a warrior's ring for the slash, berserker ring for the uh, crit bonus, and that sort of thing. And any cape will normally do. Um, you know, fire cape and everything like that you kind of know, guys. That's going to help, isn't it? So, you know, um, obviously, Glavens. Now, you could even mix Glavens with the range, just for the added bonus if you want to, um, against, like, magic and stuff. But, personally, I wouldn't really recommend it. I'd go fill out um, with Bandos just for the extra DPS and get it over and done with and move on and move on and move on. Um, and hopefully this gives you a rough idea of what you kind of want to be taking and uh, hopefully you guys will kick some butt there. So, anyway, we're going to move on and uh, talk about other things that you probably want to know. Alrighty guys, moving on to the inventory setup. Now I've got an overload flask and a super anti-fire potion. Now these actually do even out because of the uh, the anti-fires do last one minute longer than the overloads. 
it kind of evens out to half an hour exactly like the overload. And I like using overloads like in flasks because it tells me that I'll be going for like a half an hour trip. Obviously you can take more, obviously you'll be like staying there a lot longer and you want like to fill your pack out with more food. But this is just a bog standard setup. It's up to you if you want to use prayers to go through them faster. Um, I don't normally do it, but you know if you're maybe a little lower in some combat levels then it's worth doing. But if you just want to go like as hard as you can and get as much uh, money in within the hour or when, within however time you've like given yourself, then yeah, by all means, uh, fill most of this up with prayer potions and, and um, you know make sure you've got enough food in your react because sometimes you can get caught off guard with the 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 dragon special attack and sometimes you can actually die. But we'll get to that one more actually in there and we'll give you a little rundown for that. But um, obviously you can swap this out for extremes and supers. Uh, for the lower level players, you know, do buy your super strengths and your super defenses. You know, they do help quite a bit. They're definitely worth having and they will help you within the hour of getting uh, your like cash goal or whatever you're trying to do within that hour. Definitely buy into them. They're so good to use. Um, and, uh, you know, I just got the prayer renewal in there just for like the on and off going up and up. But, you know, again, you can swap that out for a uh, prayer flask and anything like that. Um, I'll cover the, I guess, the summoning creatures within this. Summoning creature-wise, obviously take a tortoise if you want and a spirit terabyte. Anything like that which will get you extra bones will obviously help and they're definitely worth taking. Uh, if you, you know, don't like to stay there for long periods of time and you get a little bit bored, take a spirit, um, take a spirit, take a unicorn because they are good to use. Obviously, you're constantly healing up. Uh, if you have the note paper, then obviously take a, um, a unicorn so you can stay there for long periods of time healing up and using the note paper to put the bones in because that's what I imagine a lot of people are doing uh, that's what I've been doing actually and it works out pretty fine um, obviously you can have your yak, yak uh, to bank bones and do it that way I don't see why you'd want to but you could if you want to but like I said this is just a box standard setup and you can swap this out for lower tier uh, potions like I said extremes and supers uh, I'll cover the ores while we're here too um, I personally like using the vampirism vampirism aura down here because then they don't really have to take any food as such because I'm constantly doing damage um, and you can swap it out for penance and reverence and things like that so they're definitely worth taking down here um, but they're not like a, a need to take down here uh, and if you're more of a soul split kind of person then obviously you can just fill most of these up uh, with prayer potions and use soul split but you know you're there to make money so I wouldn't worry about any of that and they don't do too much damage uh, to you as such unless you're just not paying attention whatsoever Ever. So let's move on to the next part of the guide, guys. Okay, guys, so moving on, how do we actually get there? Now, there are three methods of getting there. Um, and what I'm going to do in the left hand corner, I'm going to show you the uh, two methods of getting there. Uh, method one is that you can use the um, captain's log. Now, this is a very good method, uh, very fast. Uh, I personally like using it myself. Gets you there straight away, and uh, nice and easy. You know, you get this from the player ports, and you can just pick it up from the guy in there. So it's definitely just uh, worth going in there just to pick it up. You don't even have, even have to do the player ports. You just have to go through like a tiny tutorial to get it. But you know, definitely worth it for the kind of speeding of like getting there and back. Uh, or you could just use the old-fashioned method of like the home telly and telly into ports the rim and doing it that way which I'll show up here and um, that one's a bit slower but it is free and uh, you know it does a job as well and the third teleport method which I'm about to show you is using the actually uh, really handy fairy rings now the closest one is uh, Edgeville and I like using this one I've used it on and off and I need to um, complete all of the fairy rings like the quests to be able to go there without using like the staff and uh, um, obviously to activate the rings and um, it's definitely a quest you really don't want to do because these rings are really helpful to get you everywhere you want to pretty much get. Now as soon as you're here you obviously use the fairy ring and you want to be going to Mud, Mud, Mud Skipper Point which is an interesting name to say the least. Can I go there? Gonna let me, gonna let me go there? Do I have to type it in? I thought I already, oh it's already there. Look how stupid I am. I think I've done that in every, in every guide I've done where I'm saying about where to go. I always do that. I click it like it's meant to do it automatically. Anyway, and you will be here. Uh, all you have to do is walk up, come past Thurgo or Thargo, whatever you want to call him, and your location or the place you want to be is right here. I'll show you on the map. Uh, oh, actually, I'll show you on the map in a minute. Um, and you basically come up here. You climb down. And you want to follow it up here. Don't worry about the like muggers and the... I think it's pirates in here. I don't even know. RuneScape really had pirates. Until I came here for once, and I was like, "Oh, so RuneScape has pirates now." And uh, luckily, uh, let's go down here. Luckily, it's just around this corner. It's not too far out of like RuneScape, which is quite nice. And um, I guess it's kind of tucked away here. 
and you will see a mysterious cave entrance kind of thing. And uh, just hop on in. This guy's like mixed match now, pretty cool. And you will be at Frost Dragons. Uh, so the next part is uh, I will show you kind of what to do when you're here and probably find a different world because it is pretty packed. So catch you guys in a second. Okay guys, moving on to the last part of the guide and this will be the part where I show you on how to kill these frost dragons. Now, uh, obviously make sure you pot it up before you go on in. And uh, <laughs> you have left and right to pick from on where you want to kill these frost dragons. I'm going to go left and there's about seven on each side. Now the trick on killing these frost dragons is purely speed. That's why I told you to have like, the most offensive armor and weapons and the best kind of like weapons for them. Because you can kill them very quick as you can see. And I don't have like a very high leveled weapon so you can just go to show how easy I can kill him with uh, the preferred weapon of choice. Take it. Frost Dragon Bone. And uh, what makes these guys a little bit tougher than normal dragons is the fact that they do have a special ability. So if I hit him now, I'll wait it off. And what this ability does is that uh, a, a blue orb will, will go around the dragon about three times. And if you hit the dragon during that time, uh, all that damage you hit on that dragon will be directly back on you and you can kill yourself. So say you're doing an assault and you're not paying attention, you can literally just kill yourself and like that, another dragon can come on to you that sounds really weird uh, so say, alright, here we go, start hitting and look, the damage is just crazy and say if you were doing an assault, you'd end up killing yourself and that is literally the only problem with the dragons and that's why I tell you to kill them as quickly as you can now you should be able to get them so like I said, there's like a 30 second like gap before it happens so that one's done it and um, I'd say that's roughly about 30 seconds so if that happens to you, say, and you uh, you maybe using range or something or something that's hitting not as good then if that happens just move on to the next dragon and kind of just power on through like that and go go about hitting them um, and like I said you can go on the other side as well but that's really the only technique you really need to know about the dragons is just killing them fast get like that job done moving on and uh, just make sure you're not hitting them when that blue thing comes around like I said it goes around about three times and I, as you can see I am getting hit but obviously I would have had um, you know I put my vampirism all on I put a bit of soul split on just for a little bit of healing up every now and then. Um, so you can imagine you take a bit more damage if you're obviously if you're in void than you would uh, if anything else. Um, but other than that, these are pretty straightforward guys. I hope this has helped you. Um, this is basically just for the people who honestly haven't even been uh, to Frost Dragons and they just want to know what it's like, as you can see there, look at that. And uh, just like a basic kind of setup guide and uh, where to go and find them and that sort of thing. So, you know, I hope this helped helped you out guys leave a like uh, if you're new um, obviously be great if you can subscribe and you know see what me and Todd produce for you guys and uh, pretty much I'm gonna make millions here slowly and uh, you will make quite a bit it's like three to five mil per hour I think well mm, not too short at the moment I'm gonna have to um, Todd did a power on it yesterday so go check that out I think he made about three mil an hour with the magic notes so get out of there so obviously you can take a lot of damage if you're not paying attention you that's the one kind of drawback to normal dragons. If you do normal dragons, you don't really need to pay too much attention. But if you're here, you definitely do need to pay attention or you can just uh, die very quick. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, if you enjoyed this guide, give it a like. and That always means loads, guys. Uh, any feedback, just put it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Even if there's something I missed out, put it in the comments and I'll thumb it up so other people can see. Uh, and uh, I shall see you amazing subscribers in the next video. See you, guys.